พิสลายนะคะนับสามหายค่ะตบพี่สามหมื่นสี่พันบาทเฮ้ยฟูกส์และวีลคัมที่ที่สุดๆของบังคับคีร์นั่นใช่เราไปพาร์ตี้กันวันนี้และในทางที่จะไปสู่บังคับบังคับที่จะไปที่ที่ผมอยากไปที่นี่มาตลอดเวลาเขาแค่มีอยู่ในสัปดาห์และมันมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่งขันกับมีการแข่ง We're on the road today. We've been on the road about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we're just clearing c h o n b u r i We're on our way to a suburb of Bangkok. It's called m i n b u r i And look at the traffic. I'll show you the traffic. It's insane. It's a Friday. Uh, it's about lunchtime. And we're going up there to a a motorcycle auction. Not just a motorcycle auction. It's a car auction as well. And I've been to. Uh, I've been to auctions all my life, both personal and 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 professionally. I bought cars, sold cars, transported cars. I've done just about everything there is to do at an auction. But I'm curious to see how it works out here. So we're going to take a look and uh, see the process and see what's for sale. We'll get some prices too. So it should be fun. So we just arrived. It's about one o'clock. About two and a half hours to get here with one stop from Pattaya, and it's called S E I, or I'm sorry, S I A, S I A. And this isn't the biggest one by any means, but it's a decent sized one and it's reasonably close. I, I'm aware there's a great big motorcycle auction in Chiang Mai. One day I'll get up there, but for right now, just to kind of get my feet wet, see what it's all about, see what kind of deals can be had, we'll go through here. You gotta watch the calendar. There's different days. Uh, some days it's just cars. Not every day it's motorbikes. And they also have online. And I've watched. I spent a lot of time watching it online. But I, I'll show you a little bit of that. But I don't think you get the, the real experience. I think being here is better. Um, so we'll go in, take a look. Let's go. Take a look around, like a pre-inspection. You can you can see what year they are, um, what the minimum bid is, uh, how many kilometers are on them. A little bit about the bikes. Most of them, they'll tell you if it's a, a manual transmission, which most of them are. Things like that, little things. And you can look at the condition. You can start them. Uh, you can see if the lights work. A lot of them will have copies of the green book, not the actual green book, just a copy. Uh, then you can see kind of what the minimum bid is, and then see how the flow of the auction goes. See. How much above that minimum bid they're they're getting if they get it? Um, I see a lot of nice spikes, five to ten thousand kilometers a year old. That's kind of your your sweet spot. Uh, obvious, maybe maybe you get lucky and find one with just a few thousand kilometers on it too. So we'll we'll take a look around, and I, I gotta learn as much as I can, and then when the bidding starts, we'll look at that and we'll we'll see kind of what the uh, What the market's bringing for these? I think the the motorbike market's soft right now, so we'll see how soft. While we're waiting for the the motorcycle to start, we're gonna have to take a look at the cars. They're doing them already, so just get a little bit of flavor, see what they go for, see what kind of junk they're rolling through. Ah, that fresh Simonized Simonized car detail smell. I know it all too well. <laughs> Brings back memories. Not all good ones. 
So they have two separate buildings. Uh, the, the motorbike building was up front where you come in by the gate. And this is like the car auction barn back here. And I said junk just before I even came through here. But turns out the first thing that I saw come through may, maybe meets that criteria. Opening bid, 66000 That's about a little over $2,000. But uh, we'll see. They're not all they're not all junky. I did see some decent cars here. You see this one. Everybody's interested to look under the hood. I I don't not really sure why because there's nothing much to look at under the hood. No engine. But that's the only thing I saw like that. Most of the other cars, I think all the other cars had engines at least, and and they look fairly decent. So I I don't know much about the car prices here. It does seem like uh, they're they're higher than what I think they should be. I believe used cars hold their value here a little bit better for for whatever reason i'm not sure but anyway we'll just go down the line here there's a nice little black one here a little mitsubishi uh, very small engine automatic but a little basic economy car and a honda jazz beyond that that's the kind of car that people may be interested in buying just a very small economy car if they come here and you can see, so I don't know what year this is. I, I did not get a program for cars. I just went in here just to, just to see how it worked. But surprisingly, it worked exactly like the auctions I've been to. Uh, they also have online bidders, and they have... I, I don't know if they have phone-in bidders or not, but I, I know they have online. You see that green flashing on the price TV there? That, that says online. If it's yellow, it means that somebody on the floor here is bidding. And there's a decent amount of people here bidding. Uh, I think, I don't know if this is a good turnout or not because it's only my first time here, but from experience, I would say it's an adequate amount of people. And given the online activity, uh, I think I think they're going to get some pretty decent prices. So there's a little Honda Jazz that would be actually smaller than your Honda Civic. And I think out of that one or the, or the Mitsubishi, I'd rather have the, the white Honda, but I think this goes for less. Yeah, there you go. The Mitsubishi went for over 200000 So there's a couple cars, just to give you an idea. But same thing, bid. If you're the successful bidder, they ring the bell. So it's time for the motorcycle portion to begin. The first item up for bids is a two-year-old Honda CB150. About a 100000 bot bike, brand new. Well, listen in on real time so you get the idea. The reserve on that on that CB150 was 27,000. They got 33. They got 5,000 baht above reserve. It sold for uh, $1,100. Not, not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. So yeah, 2019 with about 20,000 kilometers. It's about 10,000 a year, which is probably about right. Uh, for two thirds off of the new price saving of 66 percent a loss of 66 percent in the first two years that that's a good deal that's a good deal somebody will flip that you could probably sell that uh, they could probably sell that on the open retail market for closer to 50 to 60. but anyway that suzuki right there also went for about the same price the reserve on that i thought was strikingly low only fourteen thousand. i think that went for 31 or 33 as well uh, but basically almost the same bike, but this one's more sport, sport oriented, the GSX, uh, the GSX R150. I'll just show you a couple of these real quick. Uh, the, they, they got mainly scooters. They do have some big bikes. Uh, a lot of the scooters, I think it's, I think it's also kind of neat because I think it represents the Thai market. Probably one fourth of what they had were Honda Waves. <laughs> either 110s or 125s. They're your most common bikes. Maybe not in the tourist or expat areas, but amongst the ties they are. That's where to put in the ones they sold. And so far, everything's sold. I think the, uh, the opening bid is the reserve price, I think. And they're all getting over that. They're all getting the bid and then some. So they're selling. There's a lot of Honda Waves. I wouldn't be 
surprised if during the course of it the price goes down on those. I think some people come here, they just have to buy two or three for a shop. It's how it was in the car auctions. You see the first couple go for a lot. If there's a lot of the same thing, wait to the end. You get them cheaper usually. So we'll see tons and tons of Honda Waves. First one at 27,000, I think we can do better than that. But I'm gonna have to wait to find out that because I am famished and there was five or six food carts there. So let's see what we can get. Gonna, gonna have a little something to eat. We got here later than expected. I had just enough time to look around before the auction started. We'll go back for the big bikes and see what they get for those. But I gotta get something to eat, I'm starving. Took about a half hour longer to get here than I thought with all that traffic. So, meal time, then back to the auction. So you go in, you can get a list. A list of every motorcycle for sale. They got about 200 today. And unfortunately, I just noticed they're going in order and all the big bikes are last. I don't know if I'm hanging around that long. It's a long day. But it looks like everything's going somewhere around 10 to 20 percent of the opening bid some even a little bit less so i'd have to assume that carries over but this is an english and in thai it's got the the miles the year make model of course and the opening bid which i think is the reserve so that's like your little cheat sheet <laughs> i learned a lot being here every time i come to an auction i learn a lot um, is it a viable way to buy a bike? I'll go over with you. If you want to buy a bike here, what you have to do, the procedure to become a bidder. Because just to come and watch is one thing, but to bid and buy is another. So we'll take a look at that. I'll kind of walk you through it best I can. I'm not here to buy anything. I'm just, uh, I'm just curious more than anything. So I think it's very straightforward on the website there. So they need your ID, which I guess in the case of most of you would be a passport, unless you have a Thai ID card. And you have to have a deposit, 5000 if you want to bid on motorbikes, 20000 if you want to bid on cars, and so forth. There's even a higher category for commercial vehicles. And then the, the price is not inclusive of tax. So uh, you have to pay 10% of the purchase price that day plus the tax, but for motorbikes, it's at least, it says no less than 5,000. I think cars are 20,000. So, and if you're curious what the tax is, they have it, it for motorbikes, it's by CCs. It's all down here, starts off at about 1,700 and goes up from there. So you, basically you're gonna spend 5,000 on that day, and then you have three days to pay the rest, and I think seven days to remove the, the bike once everything's settled. But I feel comp comfortable to look at them, bid, establish my price, and kind of know where it's going to be. Honda Waves, for example, I wouldn't bid until it hit 26,000, then I'd bid 27. It seems like they're all going for 27. So you just kind of learn how the bids are falling and then make sure your bid gets to be the last one. All the other ones don't matter. The other thing, the other thing I'll say, and I've never I'm not saying I don't trust it. This is the same way in the U.S. Uh, last, I don't know, maybe 10 years. These online bids, I don't know, when they started that, it seemed like the prices, they got more, more for the vehicles. I don't know, you, there's no way of knowing if it's a shill bid or not, or whatever you call it. I call it a shill bid, meaning somebody just bidding it up. Um, but I do see some online some online bids winning winning the bid so it's just it's just that little seed of doubt it has nothing to do with here same way in the u.s i feel the same way i did there it's like is that a real bid of these phone bids was the other thing the, the phone bids who knows who it is i, I don't know i guess they're registered but it, it could be a shill <laughs> <laughs> we, we gotta get going we got a lot of other stuff to do today going to a really cool hotel and going somewhere really cool tonight too so we gotta rest up a little bit we've had a long day but v kept asking me if i was gonna bid she thought i came here to buy a bike it's like for her <laughs> she kept pointing out the one she wanted but uh we're leaving empty-handed 
<laughs> I got enough bikes. But anyway, we got some other cool stuff to do and uh, probably won't get to it this episode, probably next time. So that's right, our day's just beginning here in Bangkok, but at any rate, I, I was always curious about the auctions here and I was very, I, I guess, pleasantly surprised. They, they, they seemed very professionally run. I felt right at home in them. I felt just like the, I felt around the auctions in the U.S. Uh, I don't know if you have auctions where you live. Uh, let me know, uh, leave a comment if you have auctions where you live and if they look like this. Uh, I've always liked to go on and kick tires and uh, may occasionally bid on something or even sell something there. But anyway, that's that. That's the auction experience. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this one off right here. And as usual, I'll thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now.